We're gonna be using SendGrid with Next.js to send transactional emails. I'm also gonna show you how to set it up with Superbase Auth. Let's do it. So right here, we got our Next.js app already set up. It's just a simple contact form. When they click send message, we want this to send an email to us. So in order to get this started, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is have this already deployed and have it already connected to a domain name. If you wanna know how to do that, Watch this video right here. The reason you want it already set up is because SendGrid will, will think maybe you're doing something sketchy if it's not already connected to an existing website. So make sure to do that first. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we have a server action right here for when we submit this contact form. So first thing we wanna do is write this right here. So we're going to use transition. We're gonna import that. And we're just going to, so this right here, this form action is going to pass in some form data right here, which is of type form data. We're going to come in here and we're going to say start transition. This is going to be async. And then we're going to write a function that's going to return an error message. And this is going to be a wait and we'll say send contact email action. Then we'll say if there's no error message, we're going to import React Hot Toast, which is already set up here in the layout file. So if you just download this code from the GitHub repo, this will all already be set up. So we'll say toast, we'll import this, and we'll just say success message sent else we will say toast error and we will also say form ref dot current reset so this will clear this contact form if it is successful so now we have to write this right here so we're going to create a new folder called actions and then a file called email.ts so at the top of this we have to say use server and then we can say export const send contact email action. This is going to be an async function that accepts form data. And then we're gonna create a try catch block. And if there's an error, we're gonna say console.error the error. And then we will return an error message that says something went wrong. If this succeeds, we will return an error message equal to null. So right here, we're going to get the name from the form data, the email, and the message. So with these three things, now we're going to await send email. So now we have to write this function called send email. And in this function, it's going to take two, and this is the email you want it sent to. So I'm gonna say my email. We're gonna say the template name, we'll call that contact submission. And then we're gonna say dynamic template data. And this is gonna be name, email, and message. So the way SendGrid works is we can go to the SendGrid website and in here we can create the email and it's going to expect certain data which we set up. And we'll, we're gonna do that in a second. So now we need to write this function called send emails. We're gonna create a folder called lib and then a file called sendgrid.ts. And so we're gonna head over here to the sendgrid documentation. The link is in the description. And we're gonna scroll down right here. You're gonna wanna add sendgrid at sendgrid slash mail, which I have already done. So we're gonna create this function called export const send email. And this is going to accept two template name and dynamic template data. And then we can say this is props and then say type props is going to equal two is a string template name. This will also be a string, but we can set this up a little bit differently in a second. And then dynamic template data is going to be this type right here. Also right here, this has to be equals async. So we're going to come over here to the SendGrid documentation and we're going to copy some of this stuff. So we're going to get this 
And as you can see, we need this SendGrid API key. So we're gonna head over here to SendGrid. We're gonna create an API key and name this whatever you want. I'm gonna call this SendGrid Tutorial API Key Full Access Create and View. And then we're gonna save that. Come over here to .env.local and we're gonna say SendGrid API Key equals that. And then we're done with this. And so now this is going to set up our connection to the SendGrid client. So we need to import a few things first. So we're going to import sgmail and also mail data required from at SendGrid slash mail. And then this right here, this doesn't know if it's there. We know it's right here. So we're going to add an exclamation point right there. So we can come back over to this and we can copy this code right here. And this is going to be this type. And so the two is going to be equal to this two right here. The from, we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to say email. And because we already have our website up, we already have this domain. We can say do not reply at and then whatever your domain name is. Mine is, this is a demo broski.mom. And then we can also put the name right here. Call it, this is a demo broski. And then the subject text in HTML, we can get rid of that. And we're going to put the template ID, which for now we'll just say is that. And then the dynamic template data. We're gonna set this up in a second. So once we get that, we're going to then say try. We're going to say await sgmail.send the message. And then we will catch any errors. We will console error the error. And then we will throw new error failed to send email. So now we're going to create a template. So we're going to come over here to send grid. And we're going to come over here to design library and you can create an email design so i've already created a couple so i'm just going to use one that i've already made before once you create this you come over here to email api and you go to dynamic templates we gotta make this a little larger we're then going to create one and we'll just call this send grid contact submission we're going to create that and so now we click this and we're going to add a version I'm just gonna add one that I've already created. So we're gonna select that, select this, and now we can edit this a little bit. So you can see that I have name in these double squiggly braces, email, we'll get rid of this, and then message. We're also gonna change this subject right here to, we'll say send grid tutorial. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this as well. So this thing is gonna know that these double squiggly braces, it's going to look for something called name that is in the dynamic template data that we passed in over here. So we got this thing set up, we'll save that, and we'll get out of here. And so we have send grid contact submission. So right here is our template ID. So we're gonna copy this right here. We're gonna come back over to this, and we could just paste that in like that, except what I do, because you're probably going to have more than just one. I'm going to say const templates. This is going to equal. And we'll say one of them is called contact submission. And this is going to be equal to this string we just got. And so now this can be set equal to templates and then the template name. So right now we only have contact submission. That's the only possible template. So instead of this being a string, we'll say this is contact submission. And so now every time you add a new template, let's say you have like three of these, you're gonna wanna also add all three of these names to this part right here as well. So this would be like other template or whatever. So now this thing is going to pass in the dynamic template data to this template that we just made over here. So now let's come back over to email and we will import this and then go to contact form and then we can import this. So now the one last thing we have to do before this is going to work is we have to configure our domain with SendGrid. So my domain is all set up through Namecheap. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to click manage 
and we're gonna go to advanced DNS, and then we're gonna come back to SendGrid. We're gonna click settings. We're gonna go to sender authentication, and then we're going to authenticate your domain. So DNS host, I'm using Namecheap. And then would you also like to brand links for this? Yes, I click yes for this. And then our domain is, this is a demo broski.mom. We're gonna click next. And then we're just going to put all of this information over here on the advanced DNS. So I just added all these. And as you can see, you're just gonna do this first part. You wanna leave out the part that is your domain for all of them. So we're gonna save all changes. And then we're gonna head back over to SendGrid. And then we're gonna say, I've added these records, click verify. And then this might take a minute or so. So just refresh this a couple of times and then it should be ready to go. So you can see that it worked. And now this thing should be ready to work. So we come over here to this website and we say whatever our name is, whatever our email, and then whatever our message is. I gotta change this CSS real quick. So let's say, what's up bro? So now we click send message and our message was sent. So let's check our email and see if it worked. So as you can see, I'm here in my email and it's been sent by this is a demo broski and it says do not reply at this is a demo broski dot mom. One thing you're also going to want to do is this is pending right here. You're going to want to on all of these inputs and button, you're going to want to say disabled equals is pending so that while this function is running all of this will be disabled so if you want to use Superbase, what you're going to want to do is you're going to have your Superbase project already set up you're going to come in here to project settings authentication and then you're going to come down to smtp settings you're going to want to enable that and then the sender email is whatever you want so like do not reply at this is a demo broski dot mom. The sender name will say, this is a demo broski. And then the host is going to be smtp.sendgrid.net. This port number is, you're gonna to wanna to make this 587. This can stay the same. The username is going to be API key. And then your password, is this API key that we've already been using. So you're gonna copy that, paste that in there. And so now when you create a new user with Superbase, instead of using the Superbase email, it's going to use your SendGrid email. And also in order for this to work in production, you're gonna to have to go to Vercel, you go to your settings, environment variables, you're gonna to wanna to copy this, come in here, paste it. And now the next time you deploy this, this SendGrid API key will be in the production website. Boom, now you know how to use SendGrid with Next.js.